Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So uh, slowly sorting things out and uh, this is a very quick follow-up video on the Beaver Lab electronic telescope that I'd been sent that I kind of did a bit of an unboxing and overview with. Um, and what tonight is clear and I'm going to hopefully give this a little test. So this is the uh, nice little case that it comes with and it's got some straps to hold the tripod legs on so quite a nice little uh, unit makes it nice and portable and easy to carry around so let's uh, get it quickly set up and you can show you how quickly it is to uh, get ready to be using so here's the tripod and uh, what we'll do we'll extend the legs so that we've got a bit of height when we're out in the garden uh, I don't know what it's like uh, where you are, but uh, it's really cold here at the moment. So uh, last night it was down to minus two, and uh, I'm not sure it's a lot warmer tonight. Okay, just dropped a small bit. Okay, so here's the scope. Got a couple of little straps that hold it in place, which is. Uh, Quite nice so it doesn't flop around inside the bag there you've got your three little lugs on the bottom there that line up they go on there um, where was that bit I uh, I held up a second ago oh, cool. here it is okay this goes underneath and this will just secure the scope onto the tripod. Let me just move that around. So for the altitude you've got this little T-bar that loosens, lets you do that, lets you move it up and down. You've got uh, degrees marked on there so you can see at what angle you're at. And then you've also got a little twist knob here that locks the latitude. So there we go. Got my little torch. Might need that in a bit, so let's plop that in my head. Because it is rather dark outside. We have a red dot finder. Uh, we'll check that later, see how accurate that is. And in here, we've got the battery charged sensor. So this is a CMOS sensor with a Sony uh, CMOS in it, small sensor so it gives you a nice zoomed in look. The moon's up tonight so we'll have a look at that and um, what I'm going to hopefully do as well <coughs> show you the app in operation. We'll take that cap off, put the camera in and that literally just twists a lot. Once we take that cap off there we are we're ready to go so uh, there's your scope all set up we we'll turn it around there we've got a little label there of the uh, beaver lab scope so what i'm going to do um i'll screen record my screen once i get the app up and we'll show connecting to the telescope and the kind of images that it can record right let's take it outside Right, so um, I'm out in the garden. I'm going to put the camera down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the app, start up the telescope and we're going to have a look at the moon up there. And we've got Orion over that way but I did try and look at Orion before um, the other night but it wasn't as clear. Had a little bit of trouble the moon was very, very bright but uh, we'll put you down and we'll see if we can show you how easy this is to use hopefully you can see me alright so I'm going to push the button on the back and the camera lights up with a blue ring I'll uh, just turn that round so you can maybe see the blue ring <clears throat> and it will pulse and when it's pulsing 
it means it's not connected. So if I turn my phone on, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to record the screen. There we go, we're recording the screen now. So what I should hopefully be able to do is go to the Wi-Fi and find this, which is the DDL TW1. And we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi on this. We're connected. So now if I scroll across to the Beaver Point app, it should connect to the astronomical telescope. I can say start and we get a solid blue light. Now if I turn the scope back towards the moon. I'm going to put the camera there and I'm going to actually have a look through the finder and see how lined up I am with the moon. That should be better. And hey presto, it's come on the screen, so that's not bad. Now, it's not in focus, so we need to just... Okay, when it moves left and right, when I'm moving it up and down, it means I haven't got the camera in the right way around. So let's just orientate that differently. I think that's upside down completely now. So if I flip that 180, that should, that's better. <clears throat> so I've got the centre of the moon in the screen, but obviously it's way out of focus. So we'll see if we can get some focus. I'm going to rack it out. That's looking better. Here we go. And boom. There's the moon. And that's looking quite good. We'll just little play with the focus. Now it's a bit wobbly when you're moving it, but if we can just get that moon nice and central on the screen. And that looks quite good. I mean the shape, I'd say that there's a little bit of a shape issue there but actually it's not a full moon so we're just catching the back end there but there's actually a good image of the moon now i have noticed that when i try to zoom in some funny things happen and i think the app is not perfect and that's one of the issues and now the moon is oblong and i remember seeing joe's video that he had the same thing where he said the images were oblong now if i take it away and say start again comes back more round what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a couple of screenshots what I'm going to do I'm going to put that back down I'm going to loosen the latitude and just hopefully get the moon back in the middle that's better I'll step away so there's no wobble You take some pictures which look really quite good. The shape's a little bit weird, but no, it's not bad at all, actually, to be honest. And this shows you what you've taken. And then you can also take some video. Now I'm not sure whether the video images can be stacked like they can from something like Registax. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm just going to put that down. So I would say one of the limiting features of this is obviously it's not tracking. So the moon can move out of your sight quite quickly. But for youngsters or somebody just getting into astrophotography, you know, to get these images of the moon, 
um, I think is, you know, a good thing. Um, I think it could be quite exciting for, especially, especially children would love this. Um, yeah, when I do the times two, times three, it flashes, but doesn't hold the picture. So I think there is a slight glitch in the app. Um, and I'm going to speak to Beaver Point about that and see whether they can get that fixed. But um, that's, you know, that's I, it's quite fun actually, it's quite nice. I mean, um, you know, when I was first starting out, I would have been really impressed with these images, so it's quite a nice thing to have. And the unit is uh, really portable, it's not heavy, and it's quick and easy to set up, so not a bad thing at all. I'm wondering. Another thing I do have on here is my sky guide. Let's have a look what's up there at the moment. Pollux. That's a possibility. Let's see if we can find Pleiades. That would be an interesting thing to see if we could actually get it in the scopes view. So Pleiades is up there. Let's have a look through to find her. And there we have the Seven Sisters, I do believe. Let's see if I can just lock this in a good position. There's, so there's a little bit of flex on it after you lock it, which is a shame. The only thing I think is a little shame with it is it is quite hard to do small adjustments with it. It tends to go too far or not enough. And when you let go of it, there's a bit of a flex. So it's quite hard. Like when I let go of it, the moon doesn't stay where it was. So they could work on that and make that a bit better. Let's just get that there. So it's a little bit of playing with, but that's quite a nice shot of the moon there. So I'm just gonna run a few exposures off of that. Right, and uh, I've got a little battery indicator actually on the camera and it's over half still and I've taken quite a lot of shots and been playing about with it for a while so it's all good. I've got an album and it's showing me all the images I've taken. And it's quite good. The moon is very interesting actually. The, uh, if I download that, save it to my gallery. Save successful. Let's have a look at my gallery. some information there so there's a little bit of uh, color fringing going on but this is the thing I think that Joe was talking to me about that 
And you can see this on here, once you save the image to your phone, it, it, it's obviously saving it in a different format and it's coming out like a big egg. So there's definitely something that needs to be worked on with that as well. Um, so it's not perfect, but then I do know it's not the finished product yet. Um, this is to be produced uh, and then released. So they're obviously ironing out problems. Um, but uh, I think for a beginner or a young child, this is actually quite a nice little bit of equipment. I think they could get a lot of fun from it. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not bad. Um, and it's been interesting to have been lent something like this. Uh, like Joe, I've um, he had a lot of fun using it, and I've had fun with it too. Um, and it's it's really really good. So um, I want to say thank you to Beaver Lab for uh, giving me the opportunity to have a look at their equipment. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you are successful. Um, if you're going to be building stuff like this, I know that people will be interested. So, uh, but it's been really nice to um, get hands on something that's uh, about to be released, but not released yet. So I'll be really excited if I see these out on the market and people are using them, um, and that I was given an opportunity to use it first. Um, really good. So anyway, I'm going to pack this away now and. Uh, edit this video I suppose so you can all see it and um, hopefully like me you're getting a bit of luck and although it's really cold some nice clear skies I'll speak to you soon and hopefully I'll be back to my normal uh, routines soon cheers now <laughs>